you could, you could be lucky and it could already form a nice line. It could already form a nice line. But like, if you have a data point like that, or if you have data points that look something like a line, but yun pala, it's not really a line. If it looks like that, you could draw a line like that, but it's not really a line, it's actually a curve. So this is where we go to linearization of, yeah, linearization of a graph. So we have a flat, if you have a flat line, it's, a, it's just y equals b. So if you have a flat line, there's no need to do anything to the data, just, you know, you already know. Yeah. If it's a slope line, again, you already have a regular, you have a regular um, line. These three are the ones you will need to manipulate the data. If it looks like this, your graph is your graph will have an x, will have x squared. So to make it a line, what you do in your table of values, you have an x and a y, right? You have a table of values, right? When x is one, when x is two, when x is three, right? When x is four, and then your y is whatever, y one, y two, y three, and y four. If your graph ends up looking like this, what you have to do is you square the you know, you square your x variable. You make it, you make the graph, instead of being x versus y, you make it x squared versus y. So it'll become 1, 4, 9, and 16. So if our data points are say 1, I don't know. So say it looks like this Muna, when it's y equals x. But when you when you make it y versus x squared, it will look like that and then like that, like that. It will become a line. Sorry, that's not the line. There we go. But that if it looks like a parabola facing up or facing down, I guess that's y equals x squared. However, if it looks like this or like that. The, 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 the variable you'll have to square is your y. So that's not, to make a nice line of best fit, you'll have to make it, you'll have to make it x versus y squared and then try graphing it. Okay. Okay. Next thing, next thing we know is, uh, so how do we know, particularly for graphs, like the, remember that first graph with the pendulum? But if you remember the data points, you remember it looked like a line already. So you could already draw a line of best fit. So I, it, I think it looked something like this. It looked something like this. It looked like that. So you, it looked like you could already draw a line of best fit. But unfortunately, what you actually needed to do was you needed to square y. And because when you drew the line of best fit, because the data looked like this, sorry if it's so far. The data look like this. It looked like that. Thing is, when we drew the line of that specimen, it would be like that, right? But when, but the, think of it this way: when it becomes zero, your your when your distance becomes zero, because this was our this was our length of the uh, string, right? And this was the time of one revolution, a uh, one back and forth, right? But when your length of this string becomes zero, your time should be zero. But it's not, it's not turning out to be zero. So when, when fallacies like that occur, you know that you have to do one of their manipulation things. So we, we were supposed to do is make it length versus time squared, which would result in a graph that looks something like that. Then that. So do you get how you have to manipulate it? How you can tell how you have to manipulate it, that's a bit harder. I don't think you have to go into that too much detail. Basically, if it looks like an up-down parabola, you might you probably need to make it y versus x squared. If it looks like a side parabola, y versus, I don't know, uh, you might have to make it uh, x versus y squared. If it looks like that, well, I don't know. If it looks like this, like this one. Yeah, you'll need to, you need to make it y equals one over x. Y versus one over x. Yes. Is that like the same equation? Like this? This? Down below it. 
this. Curving up, curving up, curving down. Is it one equation? No, no, it's not the same equation. But if it looks like that or looks like that, it might be something like this. Oh, so they are the same equation. It's the same structure, but this will be this is a negative parabola. Uh, so your m will be negative in this case. Uh, so that applies with the uh, y squared. Right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. This one, you'll need to make it y equals 1 over x. So you'll make it 1 over x versus y to get a nice line. And then once you've created a line, you draw your line of best fit, just eyeball it, and then, and then most try, try drawing it between two points in a line. This is where we go to our third, the third part of graphical representation, which is der derivation of a mathematical model from the graph that we discussed. So we've drawn a line of best fit. Drawn it, most of the points, data points, should be on that line for now. So like, oh, let me erase this. So this is our ideal graph, right? We have our, no? We have our independent variable, let's say it's the example. We have an independent variable. Let's use the example of the pendulum problem. Independent variable is length, because that's the one we're changing. And then the variable we have, the dependent variable is time. So it looks like this. And we already know that we made it time squared. Because we had to, we had to move. How do you, okay, sorry. One last thing before we move on to deriving the mathematical model. How do you know what, which one to use? Especially if it looks like a line, but it doesn't really fit. Okay, first of all, if you try using, if you try making a line immediately, and then try, you could try doing that and then see if it works. Because the reason we weren't able to do this is because when you get to zero, that won't work because, zero, because having a length of zero will not result in, a, in any time at all for a, for a back and forth. It'll be zero time, it'll be zero seconds. So if there's a logical fallacy like that, if you see that it doesn't hold through for everything, you can't use that. That's usually what you need to do. You need to check it at zero and see if the place where it will intercept at zero, your line of best fit works. If it doesn't work, you have to do something to it, to the to the values. <coughs> it's really just trial and a lot of trial and error for them. Actually for me this is one of the this is the harder one. This is the harder part. At least vectors and uh, vectors and kinematics have formulas and but not for this we have our length and we have our time. We have our line of best fit and we have our data points which are on the line. Not all of them are on the line. Let's say some of them like that and like that. But most of them are on the line. So the line of best fit. How do we derive a mathematical model? So since we have our y equals something plus b, something x plus b, our y is this, our x is this. Since we made it squared, it's y squared equals something x plus b. So mx. M is the slope of the m will be the slope of the line of best fit, x plus b. B is the y intercept. Right? Okay, so, so our slope, you get the slope, since most of the points on the line are, since a lot of the points will be on the line, you can just take two lines and then get, determine the rise over run. Just take two points and get the rise over run. So that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You know how to get, yeah, you remember how to get slope. Yes. So this is y2, this is x2, y2. And this is x1, y1. Get this, you get the slope, and then you input it into the equation. Let's ex example, let's say our slope is the slope of our slope with, say, 1.5. Let's say our slope is 1.5. We solved it, we got m equals 1.5. So putting it into this equation, that would be y squared equals 1.5x plus b. Our b is, so what is our b? So looking, yeah, our, our b is zero. Our b is the y-intercept because when x becomes zero, y become, y squared becomes b. So b is the y-intercept. So we just have to check where it intercepts the, the y-axis. For this, it's zero. So our equation would be y squared equals 1.5x plus, plus zero. So y squared equals 1.5x. I think you can look at, like, if you double for zero seconds, you double for like, Zero you should have zero, zero distance. However, if you are, let's see our another example. Okay. Okay, let's have a date. Another process. So 
let's say we have these data points. Um, let's see, this is a displacement time graph. We have this, and then we have that, and then we have that. So since we already know what this is, what this, what this means, what? So just like that, from there to there. So what? First of all, quick um, advanced note. What what does this mean on a position time graph? What does it mean? If something's moving from here to here, what does it mean for the velocity? Yeah, it's slowing down. This is a position time graph, and it's slowing down. So what we want to do is make a line of best fit and get a and get a equation, a good equation. Mark. Since we know that it's a uh, it's a uh, what do you call it? It's a sideways parabola. Again, use this rule. We make our y value squared, which will result in something that looks like this. Since our y value will be squared, it'll be like that, and like that. But then that this is here, okay? It'll be much higher than this. Since the original data point was here, when we square the y value, it should be somewhere around yeah. here. Yeah. But since that's above <coughs> the graph yeah. actually, just put that it's here. So we'll have something that looks like that. And we have our line. Okay? So we, pl we plug in the format, since it's y squared equals mx plus b again, that'll be y squared. This, this uh, y squared equals mx plus b. It's, again, solving for the line. Take two points, get your rise over run, get your rise over run, get your slope. Where does it, inter where does it intersect the y axis? That's your b. Just plug it in. Okay. So, really, the trick for this one is the, hard, the only hard part for this is you have to make sure that your graph is good. Make sure that it's scaled properly, proper scaling. Yes. Make, sure that, um, make sure that the data points are plotted correctly. Make sure you know which is your independent and which is your dependent variable. Where, 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 if it's a distance time graph, which should be here and which should be there. Whereas if it's a length, whereas if it's a length, the length of the pendulum versus the time it takes, know which is the independent and the dependent. Again, independent is the one that you change, and then the dependent is the one that I know that you record after you change it. Yeah. How do you do the title? The title. Independent versus independent versus dependent. Well, it really depends. So yeah, independent versus dependent. Right? Yeah. yeah. So Usually, it should higher. be dependent. not necessarily. But say so generally. Generally, independent versus Unspoken dependent. Rule. Unspoken rule. But again, we know that this is a distance time graph, but they're independent variables of time. So it doesn't really. So generally, independent first. If it's not a distance time, a position time, or a velocity time, or acceleration time, generally independent first than dependent. You generally know how to get the, how to know which is the independent or the dependent because independent is the one that changes on its own or the one that you change in the experiment and independent is the one that you record afterwards. So if we're given a scenario and we're saying, well, we change this and we record this change in the other variable, the one that we record the change in after we change the first thing is the dependent. Okay. This, after you plot all your points, you need to know which one to use. General, uh, generally, if, even if it looks like a line, you can't be 100% sure. You could try it, but that might take some time. What I usually do, not sure if it's the best way, but you check what happens when your dependent value becomes zero. Example, in the, in the pendulum problem, when your length is zero, yeah. by, by logic, you know that your, your time should be, also, should be zero also. Or for a, whereas if it's a velocity position, gra position, position time graph, your position does not have to be zero when it, at the start. So if our position is already linear, we, we don't have to manipulate it. So you, know, you have to just check when at zero if the data points work. If they do, you can just draw your line of best fit already. Okay, once you draw your line of best fit by manipulating the data, you copy whichever form it is. If it looks like that, you use this form like that. And then just solve for the slope and the y-intercept, and then that's your form. If it looks like this, you use your y equals m over x, because that's a rational equation, plus b. Wait, put plus b, there's no b. How do you solve for b then? I don't think it'll give us rational equations. 
It's just something, this is just something to know. Oh wait, you're right. Maybe we discuss it. Maybe we have problems with the universe. But if you're given something like that, sorry, it will be y equals m over x plus b because when you graph it, it'll be something. It'll become something like that. Yeah. Every time you change, you manipulate it into this, and you graph, and you change the x-axis. If you change this to to one over x versus y, it'll become a line. If you change this to x squared versus y, it'll become a line. Change this to x y x and y squared, it'll become a line. So you just, and then you solve for your slope, and you solve for the y intercept, and you just plug it into the formula. That's it for graphical representation. Wow, this should have been the fast. Okay. Any questions?